kidding. I'm a very emotionally driven artist. It's like I said, it's my form of catharsis. I just happened to write some shit where I was like, hey, that's actually kind of good. And it's always about like something like that I've noticed. I it's it's always something that's like plaguing me. They say that, you know, like once you're not heartbroken anymore, you lose all your inspiration. It's like, no, not necessarily. I think it's whatever emotion I'm feeling at the time. I just happen to have had a lot of emotional turmoil in the last couple of years. Um, I lost some pretty important people and um, definitely never getting them back. So it's like, you know, you want to cope however you can. And I definitely wrote a lot, a lot of music about it. And that's sort of still, it's kind of still there because I've had some situations go on in the meantime where I was like, well, fuck this. <laughs> I'm going to write a song about it. And, you know, it just, I, I tend to freestyle a lot in my car um, to like instrumental beats that I just, like of artists that I love, you know, whether they're popular or not. And it always just, it's just, that's the stuff that tends to be on my mind, I've noticed, is like what I'm battling. So it's almost, yeah, I guess it's more than catharsis, it's therapy for me. <laughs> I think my Excalibur will be when I finally put my music on Spotify and all the streaming apps and I put full investments into my music and feel like I'm really doing um, my part to put myself out there and look as professional as possible. I think that would be my my holy grail, if you will, <laughs> or Excalibur. Holy grail is probably fame, fortune, that whole thing. My perfume line, wow. So <laughs> that whole deal. Um but yeah, I think it would be a really big deal for me, for somebody who told myself at some point um, in that down period that I was done with music completely and that it wasn't for me. I think it would be a really great thing to prove myself wrong. That per that person, that older version of myself wrong. My second track was called Detox. Detox, <laughs> Detox. And in that one you talked, or you didn't talk about, but you mentioned, you know, uh, white girl to keep you up, Mary Jane mm -hmm. to bring you back down. Is is that are those substances that you've experimented with? And if so, like how did yes. that affect you and your art? Um, yes, that those the subject matter is very autobiographical. <laughs> um, I did struggle with uh, cocaine addiction a little bit for a while uh, after losing my dad, and my ex broke up with me shortly after, so it was just kind of a lot, and I started mixing with an old group of friends and I didn't even know they were doing that shit, but they were. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. It's been a few years. You know, I only did it those couple times. I was fine, you know. And what starts out as recreational becomes um, more of a habit than you want it to. And it kind of scares you a little bit. Um, I, I still smoke a lot of weed just because that's like... Pfft whatever, that's my, like, beer at night or, you know. Um, but, yeah, I noticed I was really doing um, a lot of coke. I was drinking a lot. Um, I was doing acid. I was doing shrooms and molly. I did a little bit of Xanax, you know, a little bit of that in there. So, and I feel like people look at me, they'd have no idea that I was mixing with those those types of drugs. Uh, it's actually not something I'm super, like, talkative about, but I actually feel like it's important to be open about that because, well, A, I write about it, and B, um, you never know who you could help by being open about those things because they're like, oh, wow, you too? Like, I would have never, ever guessed that about you. And that song also has like, I feel like you ha you can have your own creative license with it as the listener. That's why I wrote it um, that way for the most part. You know, like I said, white girl, I said Mary Jane, but like you could, you could be talking about actual chicks too. You know what I mean? So you could be talking about somebody you're attached to, somebody you need to detox from, a toxic person, not just a substance or a toxic situation. Um, it, it can be kind of whatever you want it to be. Um, I think it does take a lot of bravery to be transparent. Um, I don't ace it every time. Uh, but I think to maintain that sort of confidence, it took a lot for me over the years. I used to be so easily nervous. I have a lot of anxiety issues. Um, 
I feel like I've struggled with like social anxiety a hell of a lot, just as being a bigger girl and not being whatever people want you to look like, you know? And I even have my best, and my best friend is a total, like the opposite of me, like a Barbie doll, you know? So I think I just didn't want to feel like the way people made me feel. So I like to just be like, put shit out there. And that I personality trait I cultivated over time, I think starting from later like in my like college choir years because I did not complete school yet so (laughs) I'm still in that phase but I um I think since around like 1920 maybe 21 or actually after I got away from a toxic person yeah around that age I would say I started just being more open with people and not wanting to be dishonest and like I said I don't ace it every time sometimes you just lie because you don't want to hurt people's feelings get in trouble whatever but I think we lack a lot of transparency in this world. I think people are so worried about looking just so freaking perfect all the time. And it doesn't have to be perfect to see that somebody is, you know, out here trying for success. And, you know, yeah, so they had some setbacks. And it's it's bitten me in the ass a few times. A lot of people, you know, they come up because, you know, I've dealt with like lots of addictions. I've dealt with, you know, substance addiction, sex addiction, whatever. And people will just want to call you what they want to call you and say, oh, that's Kirsten. You know, she's just Samantha from Sex in the City or she's whatever, Cheech and Chong combined or like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, thanks for, you know, putting me in a box. And some people just want to put you in a box and leave you there and not let you grow. And you just can't let them. I think my growth has fluctuated over the years. I think I've had major and minor setbacks, but I think those setbacks end up sort of kickstarting you and really just you end up sort of crash coursing forward. But I think that was sort of good for me. I think I needed that, those moments in my life to, like the rougher moments in my life to become the artist that I am today and have something to talk about today because I felt like I had enough that I had that went on in my youth or whatever but it I was there was something I feel like there's just something that breaks you enough inside at some point to where it all just floods out onto paper for you finally like that I had like writer's block for years I wrote and wrote but it was all so forced so I think I think I've grown a lot mostly as a writer, as a musician, not just a singer. Um, I think singing is sort of minuscule now to me in a way. It's, oh, I just do that, you know? (laughs) Now, what about creation? What about, you know, art? What about music? You know, it's not enough for me to sing I Want to Dance with Somebody by Whitney Houston. I want to sing Smile Now, Cry Later by Kirsten. So I think the way I've grown as an artist, I, I grew from singer to musician. I think that's that's the best way I can put it. You know, like the timeline of man, it goes from whatever the, you know, the prehistoric era with the trilobites, and then we've got, you know, the homo sapiens now. Now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, well, uh, I think the only thing that we I didn't really like, uh, we didn't discuss was my first song, um, Smile Now, Cry Later. I made that beat on garage band okay don't judge me um, but it was like i don't really create things so i like that so i was really like proud of myself it was something that like my ex started off but i finished the project i mean he said i could have it years ago so i finished it and i kept it i sat on it for years cuz i was like what am i going to do with this and i finally um played it for my friend that I had gotten back in touch with who plays guitar for me now, my friend Michael. Uh, We became musical friends. He's my, like, partner in all this, really. So um, he actually couldn't be here. I was going to ask if he (laughs) he had to work. So there was that. But I, I feel like he's a big, important person in my life that keeps me musical and keeps me wanting to learn more because he's always learning more about guitar because he started out as a drummer and I and I started out as a singer but now I play piano I play guitar but he really plays guitar wow so he helped me put some guitar over it and 
I finally just wrote to it. I, that was the first time I really put my feelings down on paper. And I, that was a big moment for me because I wanted to break that writer's block that I just always felt like I had. I never knew what to say. And I felt like I didn't have this like poetic gift that certain people had. And then one day I noticed that like I talked to myself a lot. I feel like everybody talks to themselves and they just don't want to fucking say it. Fine. Don't. (laughs) You talk to yourself. Don't lie. So (laughs) I do a lot. I have like, you know, therapy sessions with myself and the car ride home. I work in downtown LA and I live in Pomona. So I have a long time to think (laughs) basically. And I think that's where I get my best writing done Um, actually, I realized that you can't just sit down with a pen and a paper. It's not so simple as that. You have to really like notice the moments of inspiration. I feel like photography really helped me with that. Um, you had to really look for the art in something to photograph it. Uh, you have to look for the art in a certain life situation to write about it. So I think those deep thoughts that I would have in the car, I finally started throwing on instrumentals. Like I said before, I do freestyle sing in my car, which a friend of mine helped me break that fourth wall down, which I think was a big deal. My fr- a friend that I used to jam with in Long Beach. God, I just sound like a regular hippie, don't I? My friend that I used to jam with in Long Beach. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those were the days, all the joints. No, but we we did smoke a lot of joints and made a lot of music. And he was very not mechanical about music. He was like, quit the mechanics, quit this, like, C, D, F, G, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, T. You know, like, forget that. Do it because it feels right, because you know it's right, because you know it should be there. Just like, you know, the blues musicians did back in the day. Like, you know, how did anything start? They just did it, and they were like, that sounds good. We'll jot that down for later, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um And I think that was my, like, that super breakthrough with that song, Um, even though it was, like, me completely just talking shit and writing it down. It was pretty much like a word vomit song. I was like, oh, this sounds good. This sounds catchy. That sounds catchy. I want to do that. Um, I feel like we don't give our first songs enough credit because they tend to be trash, which I feel like maybe that song is trash as far as like what's out there today, but you can't look at it that way, of course, as a creator. I think that's also something people who create do, they talk shit on themselves too much. They, you, you can't do that. Um, it does nothing for you. In the long run, you'll just end up in a puddle of regret later on in life, wishing, it's like, it's like putting off anything, you know, putting off, taking off that band-aid. You just got to accept that maybe you feel like you can do better and, you know, keep going. Your rough draft is there. Then it's done. Okay, good. You're going to go on. You're going to move on and do something great. You don't always get second chances in life, so you got to take them as many times as you can. So if you have the opportunity to revise and regroup and reiterate, then do it. Um so, and quit comparing yourself to other people. I think, um, oh, that's something you didn't ask me. Do I compare myself to any other artists? Who I'm, I should be interviewing for a living. No, I'm right. just kidding. We in the wrong seats, right? Right? No, no. You, you shut me up when you want to, because I'll talk. I, tell me to talk, I'll talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, don't compare yourself to other artists. I mean, you can if you want. You're always going to sound like somebody a little bit or have a vibe. Um, and some people take that as like an insult, which I don't get. It's a com- they're they mean to compliment you. There are worse back what is it uh, backhanded compliments in the world to get than say you sound like somebody. Maybe you don't like them. I don't know, but that's a personal problem. <laughs> I I like to I like to compare myself to artists sometimes just because I think they're talented and I think I'm talented. We have a certain level of talent together collectively and it's always collective every artist is different everybody has something to put out there and I think a lot of us as listeners are so quick to do away with like local artists like you were just going to assume they're terrible and that's I've noticed that trend over the years even within myself not really like sitting down and listening to my friend's music when I know like they would really appreciate it or put the love out there. I think local support's really, really important. And that's something I love about the IE. Shout out to the IE. I feel like everyone's really just a good collective 
um, salad bowl of artists out there and everyone gives really good respect. I've done really great art shows with Brick Tia Face. They're, they're an event planning, um, you know, it was like, oh, you know, though. Okay. All right. Good job. That makes that, you know, that makes sense. Not though. Hello. But yeah, that's, you know, it's a good communal resource in my opinion, because I feel like LA is so competitive and nobody wants to lower themselves to compliment another artist when they feel that they should be getting all the the glory when it's like, dude, no, your art's cool. Their art's cool. Just put it out there because somebody's going to want to buy it. You got to remember that too about yourself as an artist. You, somebody's going to like what you have to put out there. That song Detox, I put a teaser out on my Instagram and one of my homegirls was like, I need this like as soon as possible. I don't even know her that well, you know? And you just never know where the support's going to come from. I think it's kind of funny when you actually do put yourself out there and you get random support from, not from people you would think and then from people you wouldn't think, you know? (laughs) You can find me on Instagram at Kei, that's K-E-Y underscore E-Y-E underscore, just like a regular key and an I. <laughs> um, or Kiai the Artist is my art page. You can also find me um, on SoundCloud, Kiai.